I'm not sure about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I am a little bit excited because the Champions League is back this week. Manchester United facing Atletico Madrid tomorrow at the Estadio Metropolitano. Atletico Madrid. It's going to be a hell of a game. They're not the Atletico Madrid that sort of got to a couple of Champions League finals a couple of years ago, but they are still the La Liga champions. They are still a very difficult opponent with Diego Simeone at the helm, a team which has Luis Suarez and a team which has Antoine Griezmann and a team that we will face under the floodlights on Wednesday night. I'm a bit excited. I think you can tell. I'm going to run through my feelings, my predictions, my predicted 11 for the game here against Atletico. Make sure if you enjoyed the video by the end of it, you go down there, you hit that subscribe button, boom. You hit that notification bell, boom. You become a subscriber of United People's TV because you don't want to miss this match reaction for the game tomorrow. But let's get straight into this one. Eh? I'll tell you what, it's the second time I've done it because I've recorded it first time and I balls a few things up, but I won't balls anything up this time. Let's go straight into it. If we're looking at the team news from Atletico, they could be without quite a few key players. You're looking at Mateus Cunha, Daniel Vaz, Yannick Carrasco. That's the big one for me. Really dangerous attacker. I would not have wanted him to start against United. Uh, and we're, we're hearing reports that Griezmann and Suarez could both be on the bench with Atletico Madrid going for a 5-3-2 formation. Now, let's not be too surprised about the idea that that could happen. This is, you know, Diego Simeone, after all, a man who's built his career, really, at Atletico Madrid on the ridiculously stout defence they had. But because this Champions League is different this year, maybe Atletico Madrid will be different. No away goals. I think that completely transforms the first leg now. And it effectively, for Manchester United, as far as we're concerned, going into the first leg away, it was always about nicking that away goal because it could change things. You then score one at home and you know that the opposition's got to score three. It was a transformative thing in terms of the tactics and the start of the play. Now we know that if we come away from this game with a draw, all we've got to do is beat them at Old Trafford. And we we back ourselves to do that, wouldn't we? So I've... I, I love the away goals. I think I think the Champions League is an idiot for, for dropping and, and switching them out. But, you know, that's my opinion. But I think it's going to be a very nervous affair for both teams. Uh, I don't think you... I wouldn't expect Atletico Madrid to go for it. I don't really expect United to either. And maybe that's why I'm making some of these changes. But look, this is the starting eleven that started against Leeds at the weekend, right? And I think there will be some changes. There won't be a, a dramatic amount of changes at all really but I think there will be some and there's definitely conversations to be had if we're looking at the back here the first conversation here is about Raphael Varane is he 100% fit now uh, Ralph Rannick's got his press conference probably by the time this video goes goes out he might confirm whether Rafa is 100% fit or not I don't think he will be I don't think he'll risk him for, for this magnitude of a game and that's why I think he'll probably start Lindelof and Maguire and if we're looking at who had the better game against Leeds you're probably going to say Lindelof now, Maguire obviously scored the goal, our first goal from a corner. In 140 corners. I know, ridiculous. Uh, that stat is going to be in every pub quiz from now on uh, for the next few years. Lindelof, it wasn't just the fact that he played well as a centre-back. His runs into these positions, were they created Leeds so, so many problems because no one was marking Lindelof. He was given an extra attacker and breaking the lines. Maguire, I thought he did that quite well at Leicester, but we've never really seen that at United. I don't expect him to really start doing it either. If I'm going to drop one of them, I would drop Maguire. But given that Ralph has come out and defended his captain, and he probably put in one of his better performances uh, against Leeds, didn't he? I don't really think that we're going to see Maguire get dropped for this game. I think we'll stick with those two centre-backs. Now, if Varane is 100% fit, that does change things. And in my opinion, that should mean that Maguire drops out. But let's see what happens. In terms of the fullbacks, I think there's conversations to really mainly be had about this bloke, Juan Bissaka. Now he started against Leeds, and I think that may well be a nod to him starting in this game too. Juan Bissaka, as we know, his weaknesses exist in this part of the pitch. Juan Bissaka, if you need someone to win a one on one, you want Juan Bissaka. If you want someone to be dis defensively disciplined, you want Juan Bissaka. You want someone to win a tackle, you want Juan Bissaka. All over Diogo Delo. And that's why I think that he's probably going to start him here. And especially if Atletico plays 5-3-2, there's going to be real, real width from their fullbacks in this game. And they may well get, end up getting doubled up on. So I think in terms of safety, I think Ralph is going to go for Juan Bissaka. And especially in a game where it's more important not to lose. And that's what I would put this game as. Because there's no away goals, as I said. Go to Old Trafford with a draw, we've only got a win. We turn this two-legged tie into a single-leg tie. And I think that's why he's going to go Wan-Bissaka. Luke Shaw, I don't think he's going to get dropped. 
Luke Shaw inside a 90 minute period is like watching Manchester United. You know, sometimes they may be good, sometimes they may be shit. He just needs to keep his head on because uh, defensively, he's been all uh, he's got to hold this defensive line. Like if he sees Lindelof in there, just he's got to look along it. Luke Shaw has been caught out too many times doing that. Runs forward and just doesn't get right back into the same shape. Be good against Atletico, please, Luke. For sure, please. Now, look, that I think it's going to be like that. I think it'll be a back five of De Gea, wan Bissaka, and Shaw as the fullbacks, and Lindelof and Maguire. If around 100% fit, as I said, it changes that conversation. I don't know whether he is. Now, moving on to midfield. This bloke has made himself, I would argue, indispensable inside this Manchester United team. Now, you might disagree with that. But I think McTominay, if you're looking at um, growth of players this season, I would say McTominay inside that role there and Delo over there as our right wing, our right back, both of them have shown significant improvements in those positions since the game against Villarreal in the Champions League. When Solskjaer switched to a 4-3-3, took a bit of a risk and it just we, we were crap. We didn't have any control of the ball whatsoever. McTominay is going to be busy. It's going to be because you're playing a 5-3-2, you do end up getting very stacked in the middle. Going to have two strikers here operating. Whether I don't know whether that's Career and uh, well Felix or Suarez or Griezmann doesn't really matter. But Matomane is going to be busy. Now this is where the questions start getting asked. In my opinion, I would say that back five is pretty settled, uh, unless Varane's fit. Then Varane's going to get in there. But I, not not settled. But I'm pretty confident that's going to be the back five. Midfield though, there's real questions because of course this man's going to start, and of course. This man's going to start, right? But where is he going to start? This, let, 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 me, let me set up this team how I, th so this is how it was set up against Leeds. Popper was incredible, incredible in those first 45 minutes. On a waterlogged pitch, he was playing like he was on carpet. It was ridiculous. The things he was doing, he is a man absolutely bang in form right now. And we need him in the Champions League if we're going to have a chance of winning. But I don't think that should be the midfield setup. This is what I would do, right? Bear with, bear with. I think Je uh, Jesse Lingard, there's no chance he starts this game. You know, he did a job against Leeds, but that's it. I think we're going to be seeing this. Not Lingard there, but Paul Pogba. And I think Bruno's going to come over here. I think Lingard is going to be replaced in the starting 11 by a certain Brazilian, Fred. And I'll explain each position and why. But speaking about Fred, right? Fred and McTominay are two players who have received so much scorn from Manchester United fans for so long. Basically because the club hasn't invested in central midfielders. So who are you going to aim your anger towards? The players, if, if your anger towards the club's going to change nothing. But this quote here from Fred, I'm not sure if you've seen it. It's one of the best quotes I've read in a while. I know I'm not the best player, not the most technical, but I give my blood and my life every time I'm on the pitch. As we say in Brazil, I carry the piano for the artists to play. And I'm giving that a round of applause because it's such a, it's such a, a comment full of awareness, full of awareness of his own flaws, his own limitations. Fred knows how good he is in certain areas and how bad he is in other areas, just like we all do, just like I do. And that's why I give... United, uh, let's be honest, like we've had so many players with incredible ability over the years that just haven't had the attitude to make the most of it. Fred is a player like Phil Neville, who didn't have the most ability in the world, but I tell you what, he made the most of it with his attitude. That's how Gary Neville and Phil Neville survived in that United team for so long. Gary Neville even more so. But Fred, I think, will start here. I think we're looking, controls the buzzword. And the reason I'm doing this and the reason I'm therefore putting Popper out on the left wing is because of that buzzword, the control. What we can't afford to do here against Atletico Madrid is play transitional football, in my opinion. And what that means is just, I don't know, firing the ball up here, but losing the ball. And all of a sudden, you get, you have to, you get to, you're going back into your back five and then you're trying to win the ball back. But you, you aggressively move it up towards Ilanga on the left or Rashford, whoever it would be. And you play through the transitions quickly. We need to slow that down a little bit. And for me, that's why Paul Popper on the left wing makes a lot of sense. He's a man in form, therefore he's a man you have to get in that team. But we all know that Fred does a job. He's a worker, and so he's, a, he's the worker bee. If Fred, if Pop is the queen bee, Fred's the worker bee, and Fred will do a job inside that midfield with McTominay, trying to shut Atletico Madrid out, trying to enable us to get possession. And Paul Popper, as we saw against Leeds in the first game of the season, that's where he played when he got four assists. He loves that role. 
He's always loved that role. He loved that role at Juve as well. I think Pogba down there on the left and Sancho on the right is what we should be doing against Atletico Madrid. I think Sancho, if we're looking at players on form right now, Sancho, bang in form. Pogba, bang in form. I'd argue Bruno is really, really affecting games. Fred's going to be confident after that goal that he got against Leeds and the, the, the game-winning impact he had from the bench. And McTominay, I'm not sure. Have you seen that, uh, that video of McTominay when, uh, <laughs> when he ran over to celebrate Elanga's goal? He just does some sort of mad cleansman for like 10 yards, gets up. He was just buzzing, absolutely buzzing his tits off. He loved that environment. And I remember PSG away uh, when Rashford scored that penalty. McTominay and Fred were, were key inside that, in the underdog mentality type thing, which I, which I believe is still sort of instilled in these players from Solskjaer. And I believe that's kind of a problem, but we'll get to that later on. But Sancho is going to be our main outlet down the right-hand side. He's shown the sort of craft, guile, quality... You just, every time something, even when he gets the ball at the moment, you just, you're just doing this. Jeez, jeez. You just, the thing, the things that he is doing with the ball right now, the confidence, the touches, the delicate little chips in for Bruno's goal against Leeds. Sancho's looking like a Champions League level player right now. And I think he's going to be vital. But I've spoken now for 11 minutes and I haven't spoken about this, man. Because we can talk all we want about our starting eleven, about what midfield shape we've got, what we will be doing. But this is Mr. Champions League. Mr. Champions League coming back to face Atletico Madrid, the team he's beaten in two finals. The team, did he score in both finals? I'm not sure. I think he might have done. Seven goals and three assists in 10 Champions League performances against, round, against Atletico Madrid, including beating them in two finals. Ronaldo is the scorn. He's basically the antichrist as far as Atletico Madrid are concerned. And I don't care what form he's in. I don't care about anything. You do not doubt Ronaldo in the Champions League. Simple fact. Doesn't matter what his form is. When the Champions League anthem, when that comes on, he gets a rock on. He, might, he probably doesn't, but he's probably, he probably might do. But I do for him playing in the Champions League. And I can't wait to see him on Wednesday night lining up for United against Atletico. There's going to be the crowd is going to be aggy as hell. I'm jealous of every United fan that's getting to do that trip. I think it's going to be a cracking trip, and I hope you have a great time. But I'm backing Ronaldo to score. Why wouldn't I? History tells me he probably will. That will, of course, come down to service. So I think Sancho's going to have to have a real storm of a performance to really get the ball into Ronaldo, or he will be isolated and won't get much of the ball. But again, that's why I also think that Pob is quite good there. I think if Pob plays well, Pob can slow it up, hold it up, wait for Shaw on the overlap, and Shaw is probably the best deliverer of the ball we've got in this team. Either him or Tellez, but I would definitely start sure. That's my team to face Atletico Madrid. A back five there of De Gea, wan Saka and Shaw, Lindelof and Maguire. You could get uh, Varane in there, but it depends if he's 100% fit, as I said. A midfield three of McTominay, Fred and Bruno, allowing Paul Pogba to go on the left-hand side. That means that Pogba can drift out to the left when we need him, or also drift in the middle when we need him. And he could almost come into a number 10 role. And then look at that. That is, a mid, that is a midfield four there that is capable of actually maintaining some sort of possession. We have to make sure that we don't just sit, on the, sit, sit back, hit on the counter and just let Atletico keep coming at us and coming at us and coming at us. We do that, I think we'll lose this game. But with Ronaldo in, anything can happen. And I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'm dead excited to see United back in the Champions League knockouts with Ronaldo. Oh man, I've got to get to one of these games this season. So hopefully we can win this and I can get to go to a European away with Ronaldo back in the United in the quarterfinals. What's your prediction? Mine is a draw. I think it's probably going to be a score draw for this game. Uh, I'm probably going to go for one all. It's going to be tense. It's going to be nervy. I don't imagine Atletico are going to really go for it. But I think United will score. With that team, with Sancho, with Pobre, with Bruno, with the... We've got, we've got Champions League quality players in Champions League quality form at the moment. And we've got Cristiano Ronaldo. This United team, I'm excited to see what it does. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As I said at the start of the video, please, would you go down there and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. And subscribe this one because I've bloody recorded this video twice now. I've been speaking about the Champions League game for half an hour. Ah! But I'm excited about it. I'm sure you are too. And hopefully tomorrow, my match reaction is going to be an absolute perler because we won. You never know. <laughs>